Hello, everybody. My name's Lauren, and I see some familiar faces, but just in case you didn't know, I'm the dietitian and one of the health coaches here, and i um, been here since February, and I'm just really glad you guys came to the class today. We're going to be talking all about slow cooking preparation, and I do have some great um, recipes and just some good ideas uh, for using that slow cooker. So we'll go ahead and get started. So just some slow cooking 101. Um, using the crock pot is a great way um, to make meals if you are tight on time. Um, you can make your dinner or lunch in the morning, set it, and then forget it. You come home from, like you said, all your practices with all your kids and um, or home from work, and then you come home to a dinner that's already prepared. Um, also, it's great for batch cooking and you can use the leftovers for more meals throughout the week or you can freeze them and bring them out of the freezer whenever you're ready for uh, a meal or if you batch cook like chicken thighs or you know a whole chicken you can reuse that meat for maybe um, a breakfast sandwich the next day or making dinner for uh, later on in the week so it's a great tool for batch cooking as well and just you know setting yourself up for uh, healthy meals all throughout the week and weekend. Also, um, just some topics that we're gonna cover are some more tips for slow cooking, some really great recipes that we'll go over to give you some ideas, and then I also have even more recipes here for you to take with you, and then tips for using foods in different ways. And then, of course, we have this adorable little cartoon. Um, look, crock pots are easier to clean than cauldrons, leave me alone. So with Halloween coming up, a little funny for you today. All right, so tips. Number one, make sure that your counter space is cleared. Uh, position the slow cooker at least six inches away from walls and other appliances. This is just so you have enough room, you're not splashing things all over the wall. Um, a lot of the times, you know, we'll have like tomatoes or beans that are canned. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough room so you're not knocking things over and you just have a clean surface to work with. Um, also, it's important to make sure that if you can, prep your things beforehand, like if you're cutting up onions or bell peppers or tomatoes, go ahead, do that, cut it up, have it in bowls, and then bring out the slow cooker. That way you can just start dumping stuff into the cooker. You don't have to worry about knives and cutting boards and all that sort of thing. So just have an open, clear space when you're getting ready to use it. Also. Uh, don't overfill. The slow cooker should be filled about half to three-fourths full for proper cooking. This is just so everything is cooked evenly. You know, you don't want whatever's on the bottom to be burned when whatever's on the top, you know, might not have the same temperature. Um, and also if you're using stuff like rice or spaghetti that maybe absorbs that water, it could possibly even fill up even more and you don't want to have an overflowing crock pot when you get home. So um, just another tip to think about. Um, and then number three, always make sure that you add a little liquid. Usually there needs to be some liquid in the slow cooker to start um, so there's no burning. So if you're doing a chicken dish, use chicken broth or beef, beef broth, or you know, when in doubt, just use a vegetable broth. I always like to go low sodium just because you won't really tell the difference and you're cutting back you know, 500 to 1,000 milligrams when you use a low sodium broth. So um, that's always a good idea to kind of get things started in a crock pot just so like I said if you have chicken breast or rice or spaghetti on the bottom it's it's not going to burn um, and then four, make sure that your lid fits snugly on top um, you know if we're in a rush we just kind of throw the lid on say you thought it was going to be ready in four hours it wasn't on all the way that steam escapes and then you know Six hours later, your chicken dish is finally ready. So just make sure it's placed on there firmly and um, you are not uh, letting that steam escape without knowing. And then make sure that you're keeping your food safe. Food needs to be cooled and stored within four hours when finished cooking. This is just so we prevent any foodborne illnesses from maybe occurring, like if we have a beef or chicken dish. Make sure that it's nice and cooked thoroughly and then you let it cool and then you refrigerate it right afterwards. You want to make sure that it is cooled quite a bit because um, it will make the rest of your 
food that might be in the refrigerator, it'll, you know, make the temperature of your fridge hotter as well. So you don't want your other food to spoil that was in the fridge. So just make sure that you're not um, unplugging it and then throwing it in. Make sure it has time to cool off. And then if you are playing like tailgating or something like that, or you're at a potluck, or if it's done cooking, just put the warming feature on and then that should be um, just fine to keep your meal nice and hot and you don't have to worry about any foodborne pathogens or something like that. All right, so the possibilities are endless with the crock pot. We've got, um, some breakfast ideas, soups, entrees, snacks and appetizers, and desserts. Now all of these uh, recipes that I'm about to talk about, I do have in a little booklet here. And if some of them fit your fancy and you want a copy of it, I'd be more than happy to. But I also have these out here for you to take today. But this is just to kind of open your eyes to see just how much you can do with the crock pot. So, for breakfast, um, you could do an egg, ham, spinach, breakfast casserole. This is just like preparing an omelet. You mix all your eggs together that you would like, depending on how many people you're trying to feed. And then you put in whatever condiment or additions that you'd like. Like this one is um, ham and spinach, but you could do like turkey sausage with tomato and spinach, or if you wanted to do like a mixture of bell peppers, um, that's always a good option. I like putting broccoli in my uh, omelets. It tastes good. Um, that's, you know, a little out there, but you should try it. It's tasty. But um, that's, you know, one really good option. And then we've got overnight apple cinnamon oatmeal. This is just going to be some oatmeal cooked with either water or milk and then put in some cinnamon and I would either use walnuts or pecans for some good healthy fat and um, also some protein and then topping it with um, you could even do like some brown sugar on top or um, some yogurt whatever you kind of would like to have as a extra topping on your oatmeal um, and then for soups you could do anything from a white bean chicken chili to a chicken tortilla or pork pasol soup. Um, just a lot of different options. You know, if you type in soup recipes in a crock pot on the internet, you're going to get a lot. So. Some beef entrees. We've got slow cooker stuffed bell peppers. I actually do have this one up here if you want to grab it. And then we have um, slow cooker melt in your mouth pot roast. I'll tell you what, as long as you have that gravy on point, you can't really mess up chicken, um, excuse me, beef with uh, potatoes and carrots. You look like a gourmet chef every single time. It's fantastic. And um, especially with these cold winter month, months coming up, there's nothing better than the nice hearty meal of pot roast with potatoes and carrots. It's just, it's the best. All right, so we've got chicken entrees. Um, basically, with these chicken fajitas, just get some chicken breasts, cut them into thin slices, and then onions, green, red, yellow bell peppers with um, a good fajita seasoning. Let that cook, and um, just get whatever, whatever fixings you like for your fajitas, whether it be guacamole, sour cream, cheese, jalapenos, and get some good you know, whole wheat tortillas, and you've got a quick, fast, easy, lunch or dinner that you can eat on for probably the whole week. Uh, we've got lemon rosemary chicken, just making sure that those uh, seasonings are right with the rosemary and the lemon, and it's just chicken breast, um, another simple, easy one that uh, you could batch cook for the whole week. And then we have some crockpot turkey meatballs. Um, spaghetti squash you can cook in the crock pot. If you can see here, does everyone know what a spaghetti squash is? Looks just like spaghetti. It doesn't necessarily taste exactly like spaghetti, but it gives you the feel of spaghetti. You could cook that, uh, cut it in half, and then cook it in the crock pot like that, and it'll come out really easily, uh, just like if you had done it in the oven. And then you can put the meatballs and sauce in there with it, and then you've got it all in one pot. And then um, crock pot honey pork and apples, so just getting a nice pork tenderloin getting some apples, putting them in there, uh, along with um, some cinnamon, and once again, cooking it with a beef broth so it's um, nice and tender. And then some snacks and appetizers. We got buffalo chicken meatballs, spinach parmesan, 
It's a great dip for the football season. I believe I have a Parmesan dip up here as well. And then you can do like spiced crockpot nuts, um, whether you want to do like a spice type or if you could just want to do like cinnamon or do like a Cajun type of um, spice on it. That would be really tasty and you're making a good tasting snack when you control the sodium and seasoning content on that. So that's always a, a um, good way to monitor just how much sodium is going into your nuts for a snack. Oh, um, right. I have not done that just because I would not recommend putting frozen meat. I know that people have done that before. Uh, it's just not a risk that I personally would take. Um, but um, I have thawed it out and put it in there, and I've put a whole chicken in before. That's one of my favorite things to do is just put a whole chicken in, and then you're able to eat on it all week long. Um, but I would... Have you put a frozen chicken in a crock pot before? No? I thought you were saying. Oh, yeah. Um, I, just to be safe, I would just make sure that you thaw out your chicken or beef in the fridge first and then cook it, just to be safe. Yeah, uh, I would just buy a leaner cut of meat, whether it's a, a pork tenderloin or making sure that when you buy, say you're making spaghetti and you get ground beef, try and make sure it's at least 85% lean beef. Um, but, you know, if you're cooking a brisket, it's going to be kind of hard because briskets tend to be a little bit fattier. But if you can, um, just maybe trim the fat before you put it in the crock pot, just if you see some just excess hanging off. Um, but then also if you're cooking like chicken thighs or uh, legs or even the full chicken, I usually cook it with the skin on just so it has a little bit more flavor. It's just when I actually take it off to eat it, I do peel the skin off just so I'm not getting all that extra fat. But the, the flavoring is fantastic because it's been able to cook there, but um, I'm just not actually eating the so. We have done like a pork roast and actually taken it out and let the, the liquid part, yeah, yeah and then scoop it off and then put it back in there. Yeah. But that's kind of like that's a pain. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're trying to set it and forget it. But um, I would just try and get a leaner cut of whichever meat. Uh, if it has the word loin in it, it's usually the more um, leaner version of the meat, so like a pork tenderloin. Uh, but yeah, good old chicken. You can't go wrong. Um, so, and then like today, I have uh, a three bean chili, and that's a great source of protein. Beans are a fantastic source of protein and fiber and complex carbohydrates. So maybe one night you do a, a meatless night, and you just have a really good bean chili, and then you add in some healthy fat, like you know, top it with some avocado would be fantastic on this, or some good cheese. Um, so just you know, once again, trying to. Keep an open mind with the crock pot. It uh, doesn't always have to be a meat, so um, that's an option. But very good questions. Thank you for bringing those up. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, usually, I know with my crock pot, when the time goes up, it just is, um, automatically goes to a warming feature. So just check and see if yours has that same feature. Um, but usually in the rule of thumb is if it takes eight hours on low, you can do it four hours on high. Six hours on low, three hours on high. That's kind of what I've always gone with. Um, but it should just go straight to warm after it's done its actual cooking time. Um, and you can also do desserts in a crock pot, like these tasty uh, slow cooker baked apples. Just core it and then put in, um, I think it's oatmeal, brown sugar, uh, pecans, and then just stuff it in the apple and let it cook and it gets all nice and soft. It's a pretty good alternative to maybe just like a, a candied apple that's drenched in caramel and who knows what else. Um, so that's a tasty little treat to have. And then I have a 
uh, chocolate fudge cake as well that you can make in there. So once again, I'll have those recipes if any of these are just ones that you really would like to have a copy of. So, all right, so just to um, summarize everything, uh, the crock pot is a fantastic tool for, you know, cooking some, or throwing it all together in the morning and having dinner ready 12 hours later when you get home. It's great for batch cooking, whether it's for all week or bagging it and then freezing it and having it whenever you need something in a pinch. Um, just make sure that you are preparing for whatever meal that you are about to make. Uh, make sure that when you go to the grocery store, you've got your list, you know what seasonings you need, and um, you've got it all kind of concise and you're ready to just throw it all in the pot because once you've got the prep down honestly you throw it in the pot you forget about it and then it's like you're a Michelin star chef because it just always tastes good um, and then like I said prep your vegetables and other ingredients beforehand just so you don't even have to worry about doing that uh, while you're trying to assemble it all in the crock pot always be sure that you know how you're going to use your leftovers don't let those go to waste and then if you are trying to make, you know, one of your favorite crock pot recipes healthier, um, you could always maybe cut back on, say it calls for like whole milk or whole cream or full fat this or, you know, white rice. Not that white rice is bad, but you can always make it healthier with brown rice. Just cut back on maybe the not so healthy ingredients and you can always bulk it up with more veggies. Um, that's always a good tool to use. And then make sure that your protein source is a lean one. That always helps cut back on um, fat. And then if it's just something that you got to have and it's got to be, be the way that mama or grandma always made it, just try and have a little bit smaller of a portion and um, you should be okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions or tips or their favorite slow cooker recipe. You said something about Italian meatball subs. Italian beef. Italian beef. So do you just cook the beef a special certain way and then you have a good old slice of hoagie bread? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you just... No. Okay. So you just, do you get your beef from a certain vendor or? Yeah, you use, you use uh, sirloin. Well, last I did, I used uh, just a uh, uh, roast. Okay. Four pounds, you cut it up in cubes about an inch and a half, oh. square. So is seasoning key there as well to make it? Yeah, you get, I don't know how to pronounce it.